What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Form Check Friday. We are here to look at viewer submitted videos. We're gonna try to analyze them and bring forth some ideas, concepts, cues to try to help people be more effective, efficient lifters. Um, so what we did is we left off with uh, Osama here. All right, so Osama said here last week, and I'm just gonna pop this up in the background. So this is the one we left off with last time. Now, Osama said he needs urgent help. He's got a poverty bench press, he says. Uh, one rep max, 50 kilos at 66 kilo body weight. Um, his best was 60 at 60 kilos, which is strange as bench press usually corresponds with body weight in his opinion. Um, he uh, posted a little bit about his routine, and uh, we left this for you guys to take a look at and offer some advice on. So um, there was a comment from Z that says uh, his lower body looks pretty good. It looks like he could find more upper back tightness and scapular retraction. The finish is a little high. Now that point right there, I definitely agree with. The finish is a little high. Now if we look at the bar path he's got drawn on here, it's almost completely diagonal. So it touches super low and presses it back super high. And it's almost in a straight line. We can see this bar path that he's drawn on here. Now, ideally what we'd be seeing is a similar bar path on the way down, maybe a little bit of a curve to it. So we coming down like this-ish maybe on the way down. Another thing, so the biggest thing, let's start from the beginning here. The biggest thing is I think when you unrack, bring that bar out more. We could probably be starting with the bar right here. Then, the bar path should be a little bit down and then here and we get a little bit of higher touch because if we watch this, um, I think his touch is way too low. So he's having to shrug up his shoulder blades. He's having to pick his head up, which again is something I very, very rarely recommend doing. Um, I, think, I think that came from equipped benching because if you pick your head up, it, it lets out a little bit on the shirt. Um, but keep your head down, keep your chest up. When you pick your head up, mostly what's gonna happen is the chest is gonna collapse. That seems really, really counterintuitive to a good raw bench. Um, so definitely keep the head down, keep those shoulder blades down. We're getting shrugged up as you get into the bottom. And when you press, it shouldn't be just this. It shouldn't be just back and back. The idea is that we press it back over the shoulders and then straight up. And then on the way down, we come down like this, and then we press it back over the shoulders and straight up. What's happening is we're coming way down like this and way back like this. We have a lot, a lot of horizontal movement. And the finish, yeah, the finish looks a little high. That's the biggest thing that uh, I found in the comments from last time that was um, sort of critiqued by, by all of you. The finish looks a little high. Yeah, we definitely need to be finishing further down here as well as starting further down here. Because if you bring that bar further down, we're gonna pull those shoulder blades down, keep your head down on the bench, and then a little bit of a higher touch. So it's a little, it's almost, almost vertical on the eccentric or lowering phase. And on the way up, the concentric, we're gonna press back and then straight up. So there's definitely a fair bit we can do with technique there, Osama. So hopefully that all makes sense uh, and that helps you, my man. So, <clears throat> We're gonna move on. Our next one comes from Brent J. Now Brent says he's trying to pull sumo. Pop this up and then I'll read the context email here. So he says he's trying to increase his sumo deadlift in an attempt to even out his strength between the two styles. Deadlifting has always been the hardest for him uh, of, the three, of the three main lifts. So he wanted to see if sumo provides better results um, than conventional. He says he hasn't tried anything over 405 uh, because the technique feels off. This particular day, he says he was deadlifting in the sumo, was the best it felt, but he still feels like there's a lot of room for improvement. Now, I definitely agree. I, I think there are a lot of things that we can do better here. So this, we're, we're really not pulling into a full start position. You're still um, like way out over the bar. I think we could pull the shoulder blades down. We could get uh, a little bit more extension here and try to like kind of, I really don't like using a cue chest out, but I think in this context, it kind of makes sense. Push the chest out so we can get that little bit of upper back extension. Um, you can pull yourself down into a lot more tension this way um, and, and try to bring 
this angle a little bit more to there. Because right now you're way over the bar. You're kind of just stiff legging it. You're doing a decent job of pushing the bar off the floor, but because it's a stiff leg position, there's not a whole lot you can kind of mess up, if that makes sense. Uh, in terms of like making it a push off the floor. So because you're starting so far over the bar, by the time the bar gets to the knees, you're kind of way out in front of yourself around here and that's when it gets shaky trying to pull through lockout because I'm guessing, I can't see it here, but your weight is on your toes um, when you get to that point and that's rarely conducive to lockout. If we watch, we can see his lower leg here kind of shimmy and shift forward as he comes to lock out and then, oh, the knees unlock and we come forward. So yeah, I think that means that's, that's that kind of backs up my theory that we're a little bit displaced forward. So I would definitely think you could pull in a lot more than this, um, create a lot more tension through, um, through the upper back, through the lower back and glutes, through the hamstrings, through the quads. Um, like there are a lot of places we're missing tension uh, as well as the lats. Definitely, we can get those shoulder blades down harder. So um, hopefully that helps you. He says his conventional max is around 600 and this was this was 405, so um, who knows? I think still a worthwhile experiment. I can't tell you based on that whether or not you're gonna be better um, at sumo as opposed to conventional, but I think it's a worthwhile experiment for sure. Our next one comes from Alex. Get my head out of the way here. Um, Alex Lawrence, he says he's been doing the Russian squat routine. I'm not super familiar with that, but all right. He says he's just completed the four by four day at 90% of the initial one RM. Um, hit 185, missed 190, been having a bit of pain in his knee for the past five weeks or so, and squats definitely aggravated. Uh, so I'm gonna get some advice on making my squat more functional. I use Ray-Ban sleeves and do-in shoes if that's of any use. So I think the big thing, um, is that when you're doing something like a Russian squat routine, just by the name, I'm imagining um, you're also doing four by four at 90% of your one RM. Um, those are very high intensities and very high volumes. That's probably more or less the reason why we're having some, some knee pain. I, I, I sincerely doubt there's any real underlying technical issues um, other than you've just been doing a crap load of work for your squat and something's having a pain experience. Uh, not uncommon, not something I think that you really need to worry about too, too much. When you dial back, when you pull back, or if the pain becomes too much, um, you know, you should pull back. And when you do so, you probably will alleviate those symptoms just from doing less. Um, it looks like we're a little on the line depth wise though. So I'm gonna watch through this set, but I think, uh, and this angle is always tricky. This sort of like rear oblique angle is always tricky. Things look much higher from this angle. So you might be okay, but those look high to me from this camera angle anyways. Uh, looks like a pretty high bar squat. So, um, you know, something you could play with that's gonna potentially take a little bit of pressure off the knee is doing some low bar style work, keeping the hips back a little further, keeping the knee back a little further. In some cases, Changing the pattern a little bit can allow you to continue to train without aggravating that, that you know, whatever is causing that pain experience. <laughs> and just about died at the end. I would too with a four by four at 90%. Can't really blame the guy. All right, so next up we have Tyler doing some bench press. So Tyler, uh, he says he's prepping for his very first powerlifting meet. It's coming up on October 26th. That's next weekend. So this is a very relevant uh, time to get to this. He says he loves our videos. Feels like they helped us out. Lately, his numbers have been stalling. He's wondering if there's something else technically he can do or if he's just weak. <laughs> uh, no, this is a single, but it's on my planned opener for the meet at 118 kilo with commands from my friend. So let's see, that looks pretty okay to me. Let's take a, let's take a deep dive here. First thing we're gonna look at is the unrack. Is he staying nice and tight out of the rack? Okay, so here's something. Now it looks like, um, well, I don't really know. Um, if you are competing in a, an, an IPF affiliate, this is something we really need to work on. Can't be benching with those heels up. Heels have to be down on the ground. If you're in an IPF affiliate, if not, there are different rule sets. Um, I know the USAPA, 
um, CPL, etc. Other federations like that um, don't care whether your heels are down, but the ITF does. So just bear that in mind moving forward. I think that honestly, I think that you could be tighter out of the rack if you had your heels down. Because if we look at this, there's a lot of movement and a lot of like sort of shimmying and shaking in your body as we unrack that bar. See that? So the next thing I would do here, similar to what we talked about with Osama and much less prominent in this case, but I would bring the bar down and I would depress more, which is gonna help you get your chest up just a little bit. Descent looks pretty good. I would try speeding it up a little bit. Now, a lot of times there's a, a bit of a trade-off between control and uh, exertion, right? If you lower quickly, you could sacrifice more control, but it's less exertion, it's less work. If you lower slowly, yes, you can have very sort of pinpoint accuracy on where your touch is, but it's going to be a lot more work, there's more exertion. So the idea here is to try to sort of find a middle ground where you can get the best of both worlds, where your descent is quick enough that it's not overly exerting, but it is um, also in control enough and not rushed or falling on you um, to the point where you can control it and put it where you want. The press on the way back up looks pretty good. I think overall, your, your movements are pretty darn good. Um, if you are doing IPF affiliate, you're gonna need to get your heels down. Let's work on getting it tighter before the handoff happens. Let's work on bringing the bar out just a tiny bit further so we can help really tighten up those lats before you get into the descent. Um, and other than that, things look pretty good. Things look pretty good. I think the press on the way back up had a decent bar path on it. It's pretty good and consistent. Pause was okay. Excuse me. But yeah, I think that's probably the, uh, probably the gist of it for you. So hopefully that helps you, Tyler. Our next one is Isaac. And Isaac's doing some deadlifts. Now Isaac says he is, uh, was it 18 or 19? 19 year old bodybuilder. Uh, and powerlifter looking to compete in both sports. Uh, it's uh, lofty goals, man. Uh, I don't know many people that that can do both. Um, I know there are some like top tier guys that definitely do both, um, but it is, that's, that's good. I like that, aim high, you know? Um, so, let's see here. <clears throat> looking to compete in both sports, always pulled conventional for hypertrophy and muscular development purposes but now I'm looking to switch to pulling sumo. Now, uh, I don't know the literature off the back of, uh, off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure there isn't a huge difference in the amount of sort of EMG activation anyways, um, between sumo and conventional. Um, there might be slightly more in the quads in, in sumo and slightly more in the back in conventional, but I don't think it's a very significant amount. So that notion that like sumo is, is easier or uses less muscle or anything like that. I don't think really holds any water, but that's, I, I digress. That's kind of getting off the point and just defending my own personal bias towards sumo deadlifting. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at this rep. Uh, he says, he's asking for tips to keep his hips open. Now, one of the things about with, with trying to keep the hips open is that not everybody's hips are meant to be super splayed out. Some people need a more closed hip angle when we're talking about the setup for the sumo deadlift. The big thing here is much like, um, what was his name earlier here? Brent, trying to pull sumo. You are way out in front of the bar. So let's, let's see your start position. Your start position is not great. So the start position here, we should be getting things back more. I think you can get a fair bit more upright. Your shoulders look shrugged up. I'd like to get the shoulders down. Um, I'd like for you to sit your butt down and back more so that when you start, you're a little bit more upright. Now, obviously, like we say uh, all the time, being upright is not the be all end all of sumo. Um, and there certainly is more than one way to develop a technique. Not everybody's technique needs to look the same. That's, that's one thing we're trying not to be here is dogmatic, um, but we're not doing a very good job of, of using any sort of push off the floor. See how everything shifts back like that when you start to pull? You're way far forward, everything shifts back when you start to pull. Now, if you're already packed back there, it's gonna be less of a dynamic, less of something that you need to sort of control or limit as you initiate the lift. And I think it's gonna allow you to be uh, a bit better with uh, how you're initiating your sumo deadlift. 
So get everything back more before you start. Get those lats locked on better. Be patient and I mean, this looks like a lot of weight. It looks like a, too much weight for you to be really cultivating a good technique um, because this weight's kind of throwing you out of position. It's And then the lockout, you're really on your toes again. So the, the knees come unlocked, right? So as opposed to kind of locking the knees first and then hips through, you're like pushing the hips through, keeping the knees unlocked, drifting onto your toes and then back onto your feet and then back down. So there's a number of things you can work on there. Um, and a long time ago, a long, long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, we actually made the, uh, what did we call it? The comprehensive guide to sumo deadlift. And uh, I'll get Dylan to put that link up here. But for anybody who's just transitioning to sumo deadlift or just trying to get into it, I would recommend checking that out. We go over a lot of the common faults, a lot of the common errors, and, and some of the ways that I try to get people to find their own um, individual and unique stance uh, of, you know, stance width, all those kinds of things, very, very important when we're talking about the sumo deadlift. Um, so figuring that out can be very, very important. So um, I definitely recommend checking that out. Now our last one here, we're gonna let this play. This is Shania, she's in some squats and I'll read you the relevant info. Shania is, uh, or sorry, I'm gonna leave this here um, for all of you lovely people out there to critique and offer your suggestions on. And then next week when we start things up, I will give my critique and, uh, and weigh in and probably pick a comment or two that uh, I think did a good job of capturing what, uh, what I would work on here. Um, so she says, She's been lifting consistently for about a year now with the help of the Calgary Barbell program. Great. Uh, numbers have improved immensely. Uh, plans on competing in January, but still super intimidated about fully committing to a meet. Well, if I can offer any single thing here, it is that you should just go for it. You're gonna be very happily surprised by the openness uh, and sort of welcoming nature of the powerlifting community. You're probably gonna make some great friends. Um, and, and with any luck, you'll, you'll develop a love for the sport when you see those white lights come up after, after getting off the platform. Um, that, was, that was the thing for me. I mean, my, I came off the platform for my first squat and it was a rush like nothing I had ever felt before. So um, hopefully you have a, a similar experience, but you're not gonna have that if you don't just go for it, commit, buy in, just do the thing. I can't stress that enough. Um, she says she's attached a video of the squat. Uh, which she has a love-hate relationship with. She feels like her form is never consistent um, and she feels that hinders her progress because she consistently feels the need to sort of relearn her technique. Um, mostly though, just curious about, curious about general techniques for further improvement. So I'm gonna leave that up there. That's played through a few times now. So I'm gonna sign us off. I wanna thank everybody for their submissions. If you care to submit to have your lifts looked at on Form Check Friday, you can send it to formcheckfriday at gmail.com. Pretty straightforward there. Give us a little bit of a description. Tell us what's going on with you as a lifter. Um, maybe if you notice some issues, you, you'll notice that the submissions we pick are the ones that get a little bit more in depth and give us a little bit more information and a little bit more to go off of because um, that helps us make better educated, um, you know, sort of, I hesitate to say guesses, but it helps us make more educated work of, uh, of trying to help people fix their technique. So um, yeah, that's about it for me. So I wanna thank everybody for watching and sticking with us and hopefully everybody has a good weekend. We'll see you all next week for Form Check Friday. Make sure to tune in for our live streams on Friday too at 12 p.m. MST on twitch.tv slash Calgary Barbell. Bye-bye.